Let's take a look at the advanced configuration parameters that are down here. So you already use the MIDI message number that allows you to separate the different data streams by giving them a different number. Now, if you remember, we set up a lead synth too, which ties the reverb of the right open hand to the back and forth position. But you can see that it always starts from zero. And only when I move f further away from my body, so to the back, then you can see that I'm actually adding reverb. This might not be what you want. You actually might want to have the middle position right over the lead motion controller so that you can move in both directions. So how do you do that? So you've got the back fourth position here and you can set a data offset. And this data offset basically sets the baseline that will be used to add or subtract data from. So as you start moving now, you can actually move backwards and forwards. And you can see that the squares highlight red when there is a negative value and highlight blue when it's a positive value. So now I can cut off reverb and turn it on completely. However, when I remove my hand, you can hear that the filter cutoff is totally cut off and that the reverb is totally cut off also. Again, this might not be what I want. When I play without the leap motion, I might want the filter to still be open a little bit and to have a splash of reverb. And that is where the rest value comes in. So the rest value allows you to set the MIDI message that will be sent when you're not using the leap motion controller. So for the reverb, let's say that I'm setting this to 30%. And you can see that it instantly changed. So it's adding a little bit of reverb. And then up down, the up down motion was the cut, filter cutoff. So let's set it to 40%. And now, when I use it without leap motion, I still have a little bit of. The filter is still a little bit open, and I have a splash of reverb. 